Hey, hi friends. Welcome back to Linux Networking Command Episode 3. So friends, if you remember in the previous session, we have discussed 10 Linux Networking Command and in today's session also, we are going to discuss another 10 Linux Networking Command and it is definitely going to helpful for you. But guys, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for the latest notification friend. So please do subscribe to this channel to grow together, my friend, right? So let's start the session. So as you can see, the first command is SSH keygen uh, hyphen T RSA. So friend, if you remember, like suppose if you have to authenticate between two server. Okay. So generally SSH keygen, why we use to generate, manage and convert authentication keys for SSH means if you have to log in from this Ansible controller, let me make it a little bit bigger. So you'll understand better. Okay. To this Splunk indexer node. Okay. So uh, then how we are going to make sure that we should be able to log in from this Ansible server to this Splunk indexer node without having any password, right? It should be passwordless. So in that case, we generate SSH key gen, my friend, where we'll be deploying our uh, private key with the Ansible server and the public key should be in the Splunk indexer nodes. So let's see how we can achieve this one. Okay. So first let's uh, being a root user, okay, you can see I am already a root user. Who am I? You can see I am a root user. And what command I am going to execute over here is ssh hyphen keygen, right? Hyphen t r s a, my friend, okay. So it's going to, so here you just need to give a enter, enter, because there was already a file over there. So I have just Overwrite that file, my friend. Okay, so let's go to this directory and see what is there. Okay, cd. Okay, and just do a ls hyphen rtrh. Correct. So you can see there is a public key and there is a private key. So if you do a cat of this public key, correct. So you are going to get this one, my friend. So friends, now what we are going to do is now we are going to copy this public key to the Splunk indexer node, my friend. Let me show, show you how we can achieve this one. So you need to run this command. Just copy this command. Anyways, I am going to put this command uh, into the description. So you can use this one. Okay. Just put this command over here. As you know, I am doing the, I am taking this public key, the same from the path. You can see this path only I am using and which user means I am going to log into this. And as of now, you can see who am I? I am a root user over here. And what I am going to do over here is you can see right the ip of this server if i do if config okay you can see 211 correct so run this command and see what is coming so it's asking yes just make a yes over here so and it's asking the password first time it's going to ask you the password okay so give the password so uh, you can see now try logging into the this machine okay and uh, you can check whether it's added or not Okay, so where we need to be, go, my friend, dot ssh, correct? And just do a ls hyphen ltrh over here. So you can see there is an authorized key over here, right? And just do a cat of this authorized key. So you can see clearly if you add at last here, it's coming as a local host, local domain, my friend. Okay, so friends, uh, now you can see we have deployed the, uh, your public key to the Splunk indexer node to the Linux machine or any Linux machine. Now you can check directly whether you will be directly login from this machine to this machine without or you can say passwordless. Okay, just I am doing SSH. What I am doing? Root. Okay, or you can give the direct IP also 192.168.72.211 my friend. Okay, so you can see directly I have logged into this machine and uh, if if i do if config okay so you can see now the ip is changed right so i am into this machine this is this machine ip right so uh, this is how we can do the passwordless authentication my friend most of you i am guaranteeing you that don't know this process okay so i have explained you how to do it with ease and why i have done this one you will come to know in the next command my friend okay so let's come out of this one from the host machine the connection is closed from the host machine okay and we are again back to the which machine we are back to the this machine ansible controller my friend okay 
so uh, friends let's move on to the next command the next command is scp command and until unless if you don't do sss authentication you won't be able to run this command this is for sure you are going to get an error okay so the reason behind that one this is also a troubleshooting my friend so the reason behind that one because your ssh is authentication is not configured properly okay so let let me copy a file from uh, this server to the other server under trim directory or any directory you can take it scp scp stands for secure copy my friend that is remote file copy program okay so this is also one linux networking command my friend okay so here what i am going to do is I am just or directly let's run this command. Okay. No need to do anything. Right. Just clear this one, my friend. Okay. So what I'm going, going to do over here is uh, just see is there any file over here? Okay. Ls hyphen ltrh. So I don't have a okay. You can see I have a file one dot txt scp. I am going to give this file. Correct. And where are you want to copy? I want to copy to root at the rate of 192.168.72.211 colon slash tmp my friend okay and uh, just enter so you can see it's showing 100% it's copy and if you go to this server okay just clear everything here and just go to tmp right and you can come to know your file one dot phd is copy okay so uh, friends, uh, let's move on to the next command. The next command is iptrf-ng. Okay, so this command basically used for interactive colorful IP LAN monitoring, my friend. Okay, and one more thing uh, before executing this command, you are not going to get this command in your any of the Linux distribution by default. So you need to explicitly install this uh, iptrf command. Okay, and for that you need to configure your repository. So for that, I have multiple videos. You can go through that one, how to configure YAM repository or from Ubuntu also you can configure, right? So even in the previous session also, I have explained you how to register with Red Hat Network, my friend, okay? If you don't know, just ask in the command, I'll answer, okay? So let's execute this command. So just run the command, my friend, IP, T, R, A, F, and you no need to give any gap in between, enter. So you can see this kind of a, uh, as I said clearly, a colorful IP LAN monitor will come. And here uh, you can make your, uh, suppose you want to move on to, if you want to click here, okay. So you want to see for your interface, okay. You can see uh, in a colorful, how many packets, everything you can see properly, how many packets we are delivering, how many bytes are there, all runtime you can see over here. Okay, and if you just want to come out, just press Q. Okay, you will come out of it. And uh, this is how we can use this LAN uh, station monitor also. You can use it. Okay, so this, this these are the data you can see with this command. A uh, runtime data you will be able to see. Okay, nobody is going to show these things to you, friend. Okay, so please subscribe to channel more and more. Okay, so thank you. Uh, uh, friends, let's move on to the next command. The next command is ls of command hyphen i and we are going to see port 8090 is listening or not. So this is the list of open files for port 8090. We need to check. And one more thing before this one. So you cannot check this one directly. Why I am able to check over here? Let me show you. So if I do a java, okay, hyphen version, okay. So you can see I have already installed open JDK and I have already installed Tomcat. So how to install Tomcat? If you want me to show, then do more and more comment. Okay, so definitely I am going to make a video how to install Tomcat and it's going to beneficial for the product support engineer and the application support, even for the DevOps engineer, my friend. So if you wish, please let me know. Definitely I'm going to make a video if you want how to install Tomcat. Okay, but, but let's come to the command that is how we can execute this command my friend okay so i am going to run the command called ls of hyphen i and then colon 8090 this is the default port i am using for the tomcat and you can see uh, open messaging means this port is listening and but there is no list of open files for this one okay as of now so let's move on to the next command my friend 
the next command is eth tool and you need to give the interface name here i have given eth0 but whatever the interface you have first check that one and give that one so why we use this command to display or change the ethernet card setting okay so let's see how it works my friend so let's clear this one and first what we need to see what is your interface so your interface is which one your interface is this one and what command we need to run is eth tool and you need to give the interface name enter so you can see it's clearly that link is detected yes this is what i was uh, explaining in one of my video linux 100 plus uh, interview question and answer where i, I was troubleshooting uh, at a data link layer okay you know this one uh, so if you can see link is detected yes means your network cable is absolutely fine okay means there is no issue correct so these are the details you can get it with the eth tool command uh, with your interface name you need to give Okay, so friend, let's move on to the next command and the next command is ARP hyphen A. What does this command do? Means display or modify the ARP cache, my friend. Okay, so let's see how it works. First clear this one, ARP hyphen A. Okay, so you can see this is how you can going to get the detail. This is your default gateway and how it's showing your interface and how, right? Everything it's going to show you over here with the ARP command, correct? address resolution protocol if you want to know more about this one just do a arp my friend and you can come to know this is the system arp cache okay right you can read more about this one here okay just come out of this one clear this one and uh, let's move on to the next command my friend so most of you are aware of this command that is hostname ctl status command this command we use to control the system hostname and related setting my friend okay let's see how it works so host name ctl status okay enter so you can see clearly as of now i have not set the uh, hostname till now I'll show you that also. Okay. This is why I have keep it pending for you. Okay. So don't worry about this one. Every command has its own use also. So we'll implement those commands according to the requirement. So it's a VMware machine. Okay. You know, and it's using a VMware platform. So this is why it's giving all the detail what Red Hat I'm using. That is 9.3. All the details it's using what kernel I'm using. Right. So all the details you are going to get. And this is a virtual machine. This is why. We, it's it's giving you as a hardware platform uh, uh, hardware uh, platform as a VMware virtual platform my friend okay okay friends let's move on to the next command that is cat slash etc resolve dot on command uh, basically it's a file which you see okay and this command or you can say this file we use it to manage DNS information here you need to give your DNS name server okay and see what happened is when whenever you configure a machine okay that machine has to authenticate with a DNS server and that DNS server name should be in this file my that we also call it as a name server okay so let me show you what information we are getting over here so let's clear this one cat slash etc and resolve dot com so as you can see as the name server is this one but this is a gateway this is not a name server means i have not at all configured the dns server over here so as soon as i'll configure the dns server and when i'll be configuring this machine okay so i am going to use that same name server for this virtual machine my friend and this is how you can resolve your host to ip and ip to host but for that one you need to configure your dns server so this thing i am going to show you don't worry about this one in the dns troubleshooting of linux 100 plus interview question and answer my friend so every command i said as a dependency so you need to wait for this one don't worry so uh, why we use now you know the importance of slash etc resolve.com file okay so friends let's move on to the next command that is mtr command this is not mtr masala okay this is mtr command so this command we use it for network diagnostic tool uh, so let me show you how it works so if you do a mtr just do a google dot com okay so you are going to get a 
output like this it helps to display mode restart static stick order of field right packets lost right everything average best worst everything is going to show you over here this is why it's also call it as a network diagnostic tool and this is very very important command my friend okay if you want to diagnose your network then you need to use mtr command my friend okay so let's come out of this one i press q so don't ask me in the comment how you are coming out of those commands you need to press q to come out of these commands my friend okay let's move on to the next command my friend so the next command is iw there is other command also you have heard of iw config but that command is deprecated so i would suggest use iw command and there is an option also which you need to use with iw so that is dev so normally iw command is more powerful compared to your iw config it's more or less same only okay but this is more uh, better compared to iw config so this is used for configure wireless network interface okay and when i we use dev means to display the information about wireless uh, interfaces my friend okay so let's see how it works so first i'm only going to run the iw so we are not getting the output over here but if you do iw dev correct it's not giving you the output the reason behind that we don't have a wireless setup over here okay this is why we are not going to get any we are not having any wireless interfaces correct so this is why we are not getting any output my friend okay friends i am ending up the session here only i hope you like this session my friend and if you like the session then please don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for the latest notification my friend and please just stay tuned to my channel for more updates and and just do take care of your loved ones till then jai hind and bye bye my friend